Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's try our hand on this integral right here. We have the integral of dx over x squared times the quantity a plus bx. And your first inclination may be, just like it was for me, to do the substitution trick, to let a plus bx equal u and then to solve for x and plug all that in. But when you try to do that, you find out you end up with a polynomial in the denominator to the third power. And that becomes very difficult to integrate. So you're really not any further ahead by using that substitution method. So instead, we may try to use partial fractions. And so what we're going to do here is take this quantity, 1 over x squared times a plus bx, and write as the sum of three fractions like that. And then, when we solve for a, b, and c, we should be able to come up with something we can actually integrate. We'll come up with three separate integrals. So what we're going to do here is multiply both sides of this equation here by the common denominator, x squared times a plus bx. When we do that, on the left we get 1, and on the right we get this. So we got a little head start on this problem here. So now let's go ahead and solve for a, b, and c to see how we can turn this into something we can integrate. So what we're going to do here is collect common terms. So we're going to multiply this out first and see what we get. We get uh, 1 equals ax squared. And then here we have a bx times a small bx. So that would be plus big B small bx squared. Multiply this here, we get plus bax. And then here we get plus ca. That should be a large c. Let's make it into a large c here. And then here we get plus cbx. And now we can look at common terms. We have an x squared term and an x squared term here. We have an x to the first term and an x to the first term. And then here we have simply a constant. Since on the left side we only have a constant, we can then say that 1 is equal to ca or c is equal to 1 over a. So we've already solved for one of our three constants here. Next, we can solve for perhaps b by taking these two combined here, saying they're equal to 0 because we don't have an x term on the left side. So we end up with bax plus cbx is equal to 0. And of course, we can get rid of the x's. So then if we solve this for b, we get b is equal to, let's just get rid of the x's here. So we move this to the other side, minus cb divided by a. And then remember that c is equal to 1 over a, so this becomes minus b over a squared. So this is big B. And now we go for the third one, which is a right here. Notice we have two x squared terms, and we have no x squared term on the left side, so we can say that 0 is equal to the sum of the coefficients, which would be a plus bb which means that a is equal to minus bb, and since b is equal to a minus b over a squared, multiply this times the negative b, we get b squared over a squared, which is the third constant a. And now we have all three of them, which means we can rewrite this integral as follows. This can be written now as the integral of a over a plus bx, and a is b squared over a squared, so we get b squared over a squared, divided by a plus bx times dx plus the next integral. There we have b over x, and b is the minus b over a squared. And divide that by x times dx. And then the next integral is going to be c, which is uh, 1 over a, divided by x squared times dx. Now we can make life a little bit easier for us if we maybe factor out a b squared over a squared. So let's try that and see what that looks like. So factor out a b squared over a squared, and then we have remaining. We have, uh, let's see here. I may not want to do that. b squared, I'm going to just integrate, uh, factor out a b over a squared instead because I want to leave a b in the, in the numerator since I have a bx in the denominator. So this becomes b dx, which is a differential of what's in the denominator, divided by a plus bx. Here, that would be minus, I can factor out a b over a squared times the integral of, that would be 1 over x dx. And then here, if I factor out a b over a squared, hmm, let's see here, plus b over a squared times the integral, 
you may wonder, why am I doing that? Because I want to keep the same coefficient outside integral sign for all three integrals. So then here, what I have is, how about an a over x squared dx? If I multiply this times this, I end up with, oh no, I need an a over b. a over b, because then if I multiply this times this, I end up with a 1 over a. That's what I want. Okay. I'm good to go now. I can go ahead and integrate all three integrals here, and I can factor out a b over a squared from all three. So this becomes b over a squared times, the first integral is going to become the natural log of a plus bx. Notice I have a b dx in the numerator, which makes that possible. Here I factor out a b over a squared already. This simply becomes minus the natural log of x. And here, um, I have this factored out already, and this becomes minus a over b, and then an x in the denominator. So because I have an x to the minus 2, integrate that becomes x to the minus 1, divided by the new exponent, which is minus 1. That's where the minus comes from, and an x in the denominator, and plus a constant of integration. Now, at this point, let's see here. I can combine things a little bit more. And I can multiply this times this. So this becomes as follows. If I multiply this times this, the b's cancel out. I get minus 1 over ax. And then I can have plus b over a squared, because I still have this, times what I have there, which is the natural log of... If I have the natural log of this minus the natural log of that, I can simply write as the natural log of a plus bx over x and a constant of integration. And I believe that's the end of the final result. Let's take a quick look here. So that looks good. This, I have 1 over a, x, the b's cancel out. That should be the answer. And that's how we do that.